In this video, we'll be discussing how to measure distances in a binding pocket um, f from a protein or enzyme that already has a ligand bound. And so we're going to um, study the binding pocket and make a chart of those distances and the types of interactions that we see. So for this um, video, we'll be using the crystal structure of 3VTE, which we have can uh, obtain from the, P the protein data bank, rcsd.org. So we're going to do this in PyMol, and we can um, do that. We can fetch that uh, PDB file directly within PyMol. So I have a list of commands here that we're going to use to accomplish this um, entire process. So I'll publish these commands in another uh, place, and I'll put a link to it down below. So first, we're going to type, um, I'm just going to do these line by line, fetch 3VTE. We're going to put that into the command line. Okay, so we can see the enzyme here. Okay, so we've just opened PyMol. I'm going to scroll out a little bit. Um, so we can see the ligand. We've just opened PyMol, and if you look down here on the bottom right, you can see the uh, S, and that stands for sequence. So if you click on that, it'll bring up the sequence, uh, uh, I the sequence um, identity up here at the top. And so we want to scroll to the right. So we want to choose the ligand FAD, and so we're going to click on that and right click clay and choose zoom so we'll be able to zoom in on the ligand okay I'm just going to use the default settings for coloration <coughs> and display at this point except for the waters I'll change those a little bit okay all right so I'm gonna um, click away to deselect our ligand and we want to show our waters as spheres so we want to type the following into the command long line show this this right here Okay, show sphere, and then we want to show the waters. Okay, so those are a little large, so let's just make those a little smaller by scaling them. Okay. <coughs> now we want to select those waters and add the hydrogens. I like to see the hydrogens that are on the waters personally. This is optional. The hydrogen bonds will still show even if you don't add the hydrogens, but we're going to uh, select those waters and then we're going to select action, hydrogens, and add. So from that selection, we'll choose action, um, hydrogens, and add. Okay, so now you can see that we have a complete water molecules. Okay, now we don't want to select those anymore. We want to select the FAD. Okay. Okay, so now we've selected that, and then we want to add the hydrogens there as well. Actions, hydrogens, add. Okay. Now, um, I want to click away and select the fat again. And the reason we're doing that is so we can also select the hydrogens that we just added. So we want to set the hydrogen bond cutoff. We want to find our hydrogen bonds now. We're going to set that cutoff to five angstroms. All right, and now we'll choose find, action, find, polar contacts, and too many atoms. So notice that we have the selection here. We have our ligand selected. We're going to choose action, uh, find, polar contacts, uh, too many atoms. Okay, so now you can view all of the hydrogen bonds that exist between the um, the ligand and any other atoms. Notice there are some hydrogen bonds to, or at least one, hydrogen bonds to a water. Okay, we have a couple of those, or we have one here, a hydrogen bond to the water. Okay, and we also have hydrogen bonds to some of the side chains or backbones, but we can't see those yet, so we want to be able to view those. Okay, so now we're viewing the hydrogen bonds and we're also viewing the waters and so we could go ahead and add the ones to the waters to our chart so I've created a chart and I'm actually just using Google Drive for this oh I forgot something so what I want to do now is add the labels there okay 
So you see our select polar contact, uh, contacts here. We want to add labels, show labels. Okay, so I need to add that. So let's go ahead and put that. Oh, I've already put that in here. All right, so I forgot to, to do that. All right, so now we can see the hydrogen bonds and we can see the distance of those hydrogen bonds. So we want to add those to our chart. Okay, so to do that, I've created a chart in uh, Google Drive where I have type of interaction, the atom and the ligand that the interaction is coming from, the residue or the water that the uh, interaction is going to, and the atom and the residue that we are um, looking at, okay, and then the distance, okay, and these are going to be hydrogen bonding interactions. So I just added these in for quick work, and, and we'll try to look at some other interactions. I don't think we have any other interactions in this particular ligand, so I think they're all hydrogen bonding, but if we had those, we could add those as well, okay? All right, so let's just look at this one while things are simplified. So um, ideally we would have, yeah, that's correct. We've got a uh, distance from here to here. So this, I didn't want to select that. So this distance is three and a half angstrom. So if I select the oxygen of the water, okay, then I've got water 824, and that's the oxygen. You can see that up here. HOH, H24, and I've selected the oxygen. Okay, if I want to select just an atom, go down here to the bottom right. So see the bottom right down here, it says selecting residues. Right now we want to select only atoms, okay? All right, so we're selecting atoms now instead of that. So we want to do just the atoms. Hmm. Select away. I'll select the oxygen of the water. Okay, so we've got HOH, H24, uh, I'm sorry, 824, and oxygen. So let's put that in our chart. So the atom and the ligand, uh, the residue is H2O824. And that atom is oxygen. Okay. And the distance is three and a half angstroms. Okay, and the atom and the ligand that we're coming from is right here. That's our hydrogen. Okay, so that's uh, FAD is molecule six or residue six oh seven. Okay, in our structure. And that's going to be hydrogen number 16. Okay, so that's H16. So the atom in the ligand is H16. Okay, so we can go to our next interaction. All right, so we don't have any more to water. So what we need to do is extend our view to the atoms that are, or the uh, residues that are surrounding this fad. Now we don't want to show all of the atoms in the protein at this point. Now you could, um, you could actually do that. Uh, you could show every atom in the residue if you wanted to, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to show every atom in the residue at this point. I'm trying to, there we go, zoom out here. Um, Pymol is not my first software of choice here, so. All right, so we don't want to show all of the atoms, so we want to just extend our view to about five angst angstroms, or residues within five angstroms. So I'm going to go back down here to the bottom right and select residues, okay? So now the next thing we're going to do is select all residues within five angstroms. So make sure you select your selecting residues. I'm going to put that in here. Okay, and now in the uh, command line, we're going to put select. Uh, this VR dot means the entire residue. 
within five angstroms of the selection. So what we need to do is select our fad, okay, and now we're going to copy this and put it into the command line, and now we've selected all of those. And so now from that selection, that's this selection right here, okay, that was this selection right here, not the bottom selection is polar contacts, okay. So let's turn that selection back on and say show as lines. Okay, so now we had already selected our fad. Okay, so we want to click on the fad and right click on it and say um, show as sticks. Okay, all right, so now we can distinguish the fad from the uh, back, the residues on the protein. Okay. So now we want to label every other interaction, and it's going to take some time. So we've already done this one to water here, okay, this one right here. We've done this one to water, okay, so now we need the next one. So how do we do that? All right, we've got, this is another hydrogen bond. It's coming from this OH group here to this NH. Now we're not showing, there is a hydrogen on this nitrogen. This is a... Um, this is a, um, an amide nitrogen here. It's not a side group nitrogen, but it is a hydrogen bonding interaction there. So from this nitrogen, all right, now we're selecting uh, residues. We need to select atoms, okay? All right, so we're gonna select this nitrogen. All right, so look up here. So this was uh, threonine-109 nitrogen. Okay, the threonine 109 nitrogen. So let's put that into our chart, which is here, atom in residue. So that's THR 109, and the atom is the amide nitrogen. Okay, and the distance there was 3.8 angstroms. 3.8 angstroms, okay? All right, and the atom in the ligand here that we're going to, let's click on it. So it's going to that nitrogen, I mean the hydrogen on the nitrogen. So the atom in the side chain is, um, the FAD 606 is, is residue 607. That's going to be oxygen 2B, okay? Oxygen 2B. O to B, okay? All right, so let's look at another interaction. I'm gonna do like one more of these. So we'll move around. So we did the water, the interaction to water. We've done this one to the nitrogen. Now we've got another one. This is another backbone interaction from the hydrogen to this oxygen here, okay? All right, so let's click away, let's deselect everything. Okay, so that's at 1.9 angstroms. So um, H14, let's go ahead and put H14 and 1.9 angstroms. 1.9 and in the fad, we've got H14, okay? And then we have, let's look at that, which oxygen this is. That's, I tried to choose that oxygen, but I'm not getting it. Let's see. There we go. Now we can see it a little better. All right. So that's threonine 109 oxygen. THR 109 oxygen. Okay, and so let's look at another interaction. Okay, so we're moving along. So I've done the hydrogen bond to water, the hydrogen bond to that backbone nitrogen, the hydrogen bond to the 
oxygen. Is that right? Let's see. Three one oh nine nitrogen. Yes. Okay. So let's move on around. We want to move all around the ligand until we find them all. So now here we have a phosphate group, okay? So we have from the oxygen of the phosphate to this oxygen here. What we could do is say, let's select residues. Let's click on this fad again. Okay, now let's choose from that selection actions hydrogens add so we already did that so let's go over here and choose our residue here and choose action hydrogens add that'll make it a little more <coughs> obvious where the hydrogen bonds are in fact well yeah if you want to you can go back and select everything within five angstroms and choose the to add the hydrogens there so really this hydrogen bond is going from the phosphate oxygen let's choose atoms again all right from the phosphate oxygen to that hydrogen okay so at 2.8 angstroms we've got all right oxygen 1a so let's put that in 2.8 angstroms and in the ligand we've got oxygen 1a all right and where are we going to we're going to really to this hydrogen right here right that's the way hydrogen bonds work that's serine 120 and hydrogen 05 on that serine serine 120 well it is the OH hydrogen on the side chain hmm, not sure how we should label that so serine 120 let's go ahead and put that in okay and I'm gonna put side chain OH here okay and maybe we'll look at another So you can just go through and put down all of the interactions, okay? Put down all of the interactions that you'll see. And so let's look at what these are. Um, from the nitrogen here, let's choose residues again. And let's select this residue, okay? And let's also select this residue. And let's choose actions hydrogens add notice I'm not choosing the polar contacts here I'm choosing this selection right here okay action hydrogens add so now you can get a better idea of where that hydrogen bond is coming from so this is let's choose atoms again all right let's skip away so this is nitrogen 3 on our fad and that is going to this amide hydrogen on the amide nitrogen hydrogen O4 of tyrosine 190 okay so you would put that in and that's at 4.2 angstroms all right and so here we've got an interaction with the oxygen at 2.9 angstroms hmm. just had to undo 
usual interaction there. So you can just go through and pick out all these interactions and see which ones you think are relevant to include in your chart. So having a chart of your interactions will help you to outline the validity of your binding pocket and compare if you dock another ligand into that binding pocket and see where you have similar interactions and uh, you know how many similar interactions you have. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.